Welcome to the Medical Device Made Easy podcast. Here is Munir Lazuzi from easymedicaldevice.com. And today we'll talk about acceptance criteria for your clinical evaluation. What is that? We talk a lot about clinical evaluation. We talk a lot about why you should have one and the fact that, yes, it should be made correctly because mainly the authorities are looking really carefully to it. Now we want to help you also to define how you can verify if your clinical evaluation will be accepted and what are the acceptance criteria that you have to put in place also for that. And to help me on this journey, I have with me Cesare Magri for, uh, from 4 Better Devices. So Cesare, welcome to the Medical Device Made Easy podcast. Hi, thanks a lot, Monir. Thank you for You're welcome. Me. So it's been a long time because we had a lot of episodes before also on uh, clinical evaluation, uh, where we try to explain some pitfalls about clinical evaluation, how to do clinical evaluation, etc. And today we'll try to explain more about uh, acceptance criteria, uh, which is something that uh, people have to understand and also to use to then get maybe some their clinical evaluation uh, on the right path. But before just to go through all my list of questions here, uh, can you just uh, yeah, uh, introduce yourself and tell me, tell us more about you, who you are. Yes, so I'm Cesar Magri. I'm the CEO of uh, Forbidden Devices. I don't know if you saw your our posts in, uh, in LinkedIn. So we are we can help with uh, clinical evaluation, clinical studies, and technical documentations. And we pride ourselves in interwining the processes so that you don't just get a certification, but also something more out of it, like additional value out of these processes. Exactly. So yeah, uh, Cesare is my go-to person where, where I have, when I have sometimes some issues with notified bodies and ask him, is it normal this or should I do that? <laughs> where should I go, etc. Because yeah, he knows a lot about that. And as I've said today, we'll talk more about acceptance criteria. Um, as I get a lot of time per email or per message, etc., a question, I want also to integrate this question here. So <laughs> the question I get a lot is, is it is every product, does every product need a clinical evaluation? This is mainly one of the things that people are asking, thinking that because my product is low risk device or because my product is sold only once a year, there is no need of clinical evaluation. So what do you say to that? So every product needs a clinical evaluation, needs a clinical evaluation plan and a clinical evaluation report. Uh, you don't necessarily need a clinical investigation. Okay, so that's, that's the difference, but you have always to explain why your device is beneficial, why its benefit risk profile is uh, is positive, and why it's worth bringing it on the market in terms of performance and safety. And that's where the acceptance criteria actually play a big role in, into this. So software needs one, class one devices, class one needs devices one. Any, all, all anything that is a medical device needs yes. something. Yeah, yeah, all of them. And so, because in the end, for all of them, one has to show this uh, this uh, uh, positive benefit uh, risk uh, ratio. And okay, so, so in any case, this evaluation needs to be done so that the the source of data can change, can it can be tailored specifically to the type of product, depends on the state of the art and the device. There are many, many factors that can affect that, but it, it has to be explained. So they want the reviewers want to know why you think that it's worth bringing this device on the market, and just say it is because it is won't work. <laughs> so. Exactly. Exactly. So um, now, yes, as as we said, now we have to have this clinical evaluation. Sometimes mm -hmm. the problem is that people are starting to write some clinical evaluation, but they are just writing to write it, but in, in, mm -hmm. in reality, there is no real substance or real information there. So here it's why we want to also include those acceptance criteria. How mm -hmm. can we say that your clinical evaluation can be accepted? What are exactly the elements that the threshold that you have to, to meet or whatever? So can we explain maybe uh, what is this notion of acceptance mm -hmm. criteria? What are we talking about here when we say you should have some you should meet some acceptance criteria so that you your your clinical evaluation is approved for of uh, by the the regulators. Yeah. So the, the acceptance criteria are introduced in the MDR in Article 14. So where there is really this sentence, I can I can read it. One has to give, uh, one has to explain the acceptability of the benefit risk ratio for the various indication and for the intended purpose or purpose of the device. Okay. And this should be based on the state of the art in medicine. So it's in this point on in Article 14 that the MDR says you need to define these acceptance criteria 
and you need you should do it based on the state of the art this also links to an undergoing discussion in the field which is when should you do the state of the art in the cr in the cp and the answer based on this uh requirement of the ndr it's really clear first you do this uh, state of the art analysis and once you have the set of the art analysis, only then you're able to define the acceptance criteria. And this acceptance criteria should go in the CEP. This is a point of a requirement of the CEP. So the SOLTA, the state of the art analysis, must come before the, you are able to create the structure of your uh, CEP. And this uh, article uh, spells it uh, very clearly. There is also mention of it in the, in the mm, MEDEF. So it says uh, the CPCR should uh, define the acceptability criteria for the evaluation of the benefit risk profile again. And there they also specify uh, for the specific side effects of the device under evaluation. This is uh, like an additional specification. And there is also another point in the MDR where they uh, also um, specify the acceptability uh, criteria, but more uh, support in the clinical development plan. So. It's again, it says also a clinical development plan should include the way I'm reading here, the, the whole the progression from first in man to the confirmatory studies and uh, an indication of milestones and a description of potential acceptance criteria. So this is, this is telling us, so in this clinical development plan, we should also define how do you, can you say that uh, your clinical data are really sufficient to show the, for, uh, the performance and safety of your device. And I mean, it's really, a, 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 if one wants to, to convince the reviewers that one has the clinical evaluation under control, that the uh, acceptance criteria are really like a core point. That's really where it, uh, you can show, I have my medical field un under control. I know what I'm doing and I know exactly which direction I have. And unfortunately that's what we see in many, many uh, CRs that this, acceptance criteria are either not formulated at all like left in in the in the air like as something obvious or are um formulated very weakly very um uh extremely qualitatively like excessively uh qualitative uh, and not uh, without a specific structures and that's where things become weak because then the only way you have to support them is to start argumenting and formulating sentence, hoping that you say, but you don't say. And that strategy, which was very common, for example, uh, in the transition phase of MDD, MDR, now won't work anymore. Okay. So if you if you have, especially you know, uh, if you want to, to send your CR to the SI, to, to suit, then you really have to nail the criteria. And I think there is, there is one thing that really um, help thinking about it. So if, if for those familiar with clinical investigation plans, I mean, the clinical investigation plans have uh, a clear structure. You present your device, uh, you present what you've done to, to ensure that uh, you have validated everything up to the clinical data. And then you essentially have your study hypothesis that you want to, to, to check. This study hypothesis is essentially an acceptance criteria for saying my, my um, my study is successful, has been successful. I've shown what I want, what I wanted to do. And in the end, if you think about this, the CP has exactly the, sort of the same structure. The CP is like a, a meta container of, uh, of clinical investigation plan. And so uh, the idea is that you have all these acceptance criteria in the CP that then eventually can be broken down into different clinical investigation or uh, that you can cover with data from the literature and, and so on. But that's the the, uh, the, so sometimes thinking about it like this help really really helps. And obviously, also when you do a CIP, uh, a clinical investigation plan, then you you will support whatever you say with the state of the art analysis that you can also reference or you have directly in the in the CIP. Okay. So so in terms of 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 that, when you say it now, it's like obvious if I can say what we are talking about. It's like it's logical. It's like uh, yeah, we have to do that because normal. You have to define what are what you are claiming and what you are uh, what you want to reach, and then prove that you reach that uh, that acceptance criteria. But was there any um, evolution, if I can say, of those acceptance criteria? Was there? Of, or, or their review, maybe, or their scrutiny by notified body or thing. Was there any changes or yes. was there anything like before it was strict and now it's less strict or before it was less strict and now it's stricter and they are really looking for this kind of thing? Yeah, so so I think until some, some time ago, they, they 
would not stress too much if you didn't have very well defined acceptance criteria. So it's it was uh, the, the the classic acceptance criteria that was done until know, two years ago would be like a, I can show benefit and uh, yeah the, the risk profile looks good and this is not what they want to see now. Now they want to they want you to really say. I'm gonna reach a, a decrease in uh, pain of one point uh, plus minus something. Okay, so that that you have very clear ideas of actually what you what you want to show. And there is a a big difference in this because it 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 really allows you to create a CPCR that you can work like with tick tick tick. Practically say, okay, I have to show that uh, I'm my my outcome and in the end is three. Good. I go to the CR, do my data, do this. Yes, tick, done. This is, uh, and it really becomes a, a, a uh, sort of dialogue between CPCR, CP, you list the criteria, and in the CR, you show where you get, got the data from, and then you meta analyze, summarize this data, and say, done, 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 done. It works. Okay. okay. And in terms of uh, criteria, so we have quantitative and qualitative. So it's also that. This discussion of, for example, uh, if I have uh, an implant or something, the qualitative the qualitative can be that I should walk again or I should be able to breathe again. Or I... so, yeah. So, so is, is there some acceptance also about maybe not only numbering data, but also some qualitative to say yes, it works yes. only. So, so the first thing also to understand here is that. There is no one acceptance criteria for the CPCR. There are many. So I was trying to, to make a list of, of them. Uh, I, I've listed more than 12, I think. So for, for example, for the, for the just take, imagine you have a device with one benefit. Huh? So also there for this benefit, you will not just have one acceptance criteria. You will have many. First of all, you have, you have to say, is my benefit true? I can say I reduce pain and it's, so you can show that your device reduces pain. But then the question is, are you reducing pain compatible to what is known to uh, be uh, the, uh, achieved in the in the based on the state of the art for this type of procedure? That's another acceptance criteria. So the first criteria would say yes, I can, I do indeed reduce significantly pain. The second uh, criteria is I do uh, reduce it in a way that is meaningful for the patient or in a way that is compatible with what is known sh is known should happen to the state of the art. And then you have more. You have the benchmarking. So I take these three devices, uh, that, am I underperforming or compared to the similar devices or am, am I uh, like similar in performance or even superior? So how, how do I place myself? When will I say that that that's fine? And, and you can go using the same stratification for also the performance or for the safety. So uh, I can say, well, I, I can say uh, my, my, uh, my, um, this risk is acceptable if it's below 1%. Okay, yeah. but is that the same uh, that has be, uh, been reported for uh, in the medical field? Maybe in the, in the field it's 0.1%. So is this 1% fine? And uh, yes or no? And do the other dev medical devices also uh, perform similarly? So it, it's, this, it's really building this one layer above the other. Now we can see what, what one uh, sorry, has to specify. And uh, it becomes like... It, really a, a list of things and but then there there are more like when will you say that your benefit risk profile is uh, acceptable and uh and when will you say that your benefit risk profile is acceptable you take the set of the art into account as, again and when do you say how do you define that your uh your uh, risk uh, uh so the, the adverse events that you have identified and quantified in your CR, whether this is compar is compatible with the risk management for example that you, that you've done or with the PMS data. So these are, these are, it's all a big list of criteria. It's like you know, 15, 20 uh, criteria that you can have depending on how many uh, population, how many indications, how many uh, claims uh, you have. And that then you work out one after the other. So in terms of um, uh, creation or evaluation of those criteria, so um, I suppose, as you've said at the beginning that you start with the state of the art. So mainly, as you've said, the first we are looking what is existing on the field. If, for example, as you said, uh, on the field, you can reduce the pain of 3%, but your device reduces it only of 1%. It's like, yeah. so usually, really uh, this uh, device be on the market because it's doing less than the average. So 
it's really this comparison that you have to to do also to say I am the same as the market or I am better than the market or, or whatever. So this is many the, the way to, to make it. Let's have let's have an example of a device that reduces pain. This is very classic in every one that happens very often. So uh, you you might have uh, a, 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 first of all you say okay my, my device reduces pain. Yep. Then the second question is is this pain reduction clinically significant for for the patient? This is this minimum clinical important difference that you can identify in the state of the art for the specific condition. Then the second question is okay usually I mean every device implements a medical procedure. Now, what is known for this medical procedure for uh, the outcome pain? Uh, what is known that usually it's it's achieved with this type of uh, exercise? I don't know. And then you will get a typical value, which might be uh, a 2.3 uh, with a confidence interval. And then at that point, you can say, OK, my device achieves uh, 1.9. OK, it, it's less, but you know, it's not statistically significantly different from what is given in the, in the field of the art. There is uh, the the reduction is statistically significant, is uh, clinically significant. So I have achieved something that's meaningful for the patient. It's uh, it's um, it's uh, it exists really. It's not just due to r random uh, effects, and is compatible with what is known in the state of the art. And this is 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 built based on on uh, on the standard statistical techniques. Now, not it's it's not that every uh, um, acceptance criteria has to be super quantitative, so it, it, that depends a bit on, on the device and on the on the field. But usually, like for the benefit and for the safety, what the reviewers want to see is something that it's numerically and it's based on some state of the art technique, because that's really where you know it's, it's the meat of the of the clinical evaluation. Then you know, suppose you go to uh, you, you have. 20 alternative uh, procedures that you can, can compare yourself uh, to. Now, th then they will probably not require you to, to do a super elaborate analysis against e each procedure. They will ask you to, to find out what the values of pain reduction for these other procedures are, and then to, to compare both even in qualitative, whether they are, uh, they are uh, similar or not. So, I mean, there is a, a degree of flexibility, but the more, the, quant the more quantitative you are, the more you apply standardized uh, statistical technique, the more likely is that you won't get annoyed at the point of the of the review because it's I mean what what is there to 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 object to you know you you find the values in some meta analysis that you sh should achieve you apply st a standardized statistical method you do the comparison works I mean you have shown it uh, to the best of uh, the current knowledge. Hey, just a second. Do you need a EU, Swiss or UK representative? Then choose Easy Medical Device. We can represent you and also become your importer. Contact us at eo at easymedicaldevice.com. And um, so let's say, imagine now that, okay, I'm trying to do this um, evaluation. I find some criteria. I have maybe five criteria. Uh, or five uh, claims or things, and then I try to find a, a criteria for each of the claims. And four of them are good, but one of them is bad. Mm -hmm. uh, and I decide, okay, let's update a bit this criteria or this claim to make it like more fuzzy or more like uh, not really quantitative, but more qualitative, but try to hide that. Is this something that you think a notified body is able to identify first? Or... It's only because you are the expert of the product that you can know about this and do this kind of thing. So is there really a dangerous strategy that some people may do on by, by going through that way? This depends on, on the reviewer. So if uh, there are reviewers that are really, really fit on the type of products that they are reviewing, so you can really tell from the type of questions and uh, that they really know their medical field really for the specific product. And with this type of reviewers, you they will spot immediately if something is is weird. They already know in advance what they expect to see. So it's more like matching expectation than uh, like uh, taking the lead. Uh, then uh, there are uh, some reviewers less specialized. I think they do a broader range of products. And there it's more about the manufacturer taking the lead. But the point is, you know, if if you found that in the literature the uh, the range of pain reduction again is one ninety five percent confidence interval is one to two points okay so there is no much that you can uh, tweak there so it, the, the, your acceptance criteria will be that there is no statistical significant difference between your result and the standard of care confidence interval or if there is you are better 
So that you cannot do create much more there. And the standard parameter is 5% significant. So there's not much to tweak. I think in that case, if you didn't get the result that you were hoping for, the best thing is to try to explain why you think that this is the case. Okay, so it's uh, you might also it might also happen that you know many C uh, CRs are still built for the legacy devices in particular. They are built on on literature data maybe, and these are very heterogeneous. And uh, so some results are sometimes very weird also compared to what we want to show because it's because they have very weird a very weird uh, patient population that they selected. And if you go and analyze this and you explain this then even if you didn't get your complete check, then you can say, okay, in this case, it didn't work, but it, it's because of, of this and this and that. And then you can start a, a dialogue on that. I think in that case, you will probably have to propose something for the post market or how to keep monitoring that's, uh, that that's still fine. But as we said, we have five criteria and four are okay. One is fuzzy, if I can say, can they also reject everything just because one is not really matching correctly or we can say that no because the four others are maybe also well, I, a I mean, benefit. It, it, it's hard to say in general if that was the core claim of your device and it's very related to safety and the result is this a disaster then yes they can obviously reject it but if it, you know if it's a uh, something not as dramatically important and it's it, there is a, a no, not gigantic deviation, and you can explain what this is the case, then a solution could be to say, yes, I have a gap here. Uh, this is not completely clarified, but let's go uh, in post-market and let's find a way to uh, collect some uh, data in a smart way to still show the look. I mean, actually, uh, the explanation that we gave is correct. And um, can they also have the make ask you to uh, remove those claims immediately to say yes okay keep the four but the fifth one no we don't want to see that so uh, just remove it that that could happen it's uh, if uh, if it gets to that point the reviewer could ask to, uh, to say uh, no this indication you're not covering it or this claim you're not covering it uh, before one gets to the, this point i will really try to find a dialogue with the with the reviewers and you know to 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 also make counter proposals and uh, to uh, to explain because I mean it depends if if you have really good feeling especially based on the set of the art it's known that something should happen and maybe it's just your set of data that don't shows that doesn't show that clearly then why not trying to find a solution there of how to 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 propose this but always with this idea it's going to be uh, based on data we are going to collect something and we are going to make sense of it not just ah you know state of the art yeah says it yeah. it works for my device you know this is exactly uh, and um also okay i have established some acceptance criteria i have established all this do you have some tips maybe for those that are listening now to us to say how can i be sure because i'm really honest and i really think this is the the thing and that how can i be sure that what i've selected is valid that what i've selected is will be accepted or will be really understood correctly by the notified body is there a way to make it like make a validation of against of your criteria to say yes this is correct yeah yeah i mean that's it's very very well uh, it's very linked to the to the sota so if you have a very good sota structure well with this um what do we say that at least these three core parts so background of the medical condition then background of your procedure and background of your alternative procedures and you have found some you know some good study that summarizes the, uh, the quantitatively these parameters that you're looking for, the outcomes, then uh, these this, uh, acceptance criteria sort of pop out uh, naturally. So there's not so much that you even need to do. They're, they're, they're like a, 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 it's like a waterfall. Uh, the problem is, is, is if the state of the art is how, if how you get to this, so if, if the state of the art is not clear, if, if your process, systematic process on how to get there is not clear, then the reviewer might be confused and say, why are you saying this? So that's, that's, uh, that could be, uh, the issue. But once you, you collected the right elements for the state of the art analysis, then it's really, uh, it's a puzzle you, that you have just to fix and, uh, right. Yeah. You, usually the challenge is, okay. It's clear what you, what you have to, to, to do. And, uh, the challenge is now do I, especially for the legacy devices, do I have enough data to show this? 
so if it's a new device, then you can say, okay, I'm, I'm gonna collect the data in some form and I'm gonna show it. But for the legacy devices, okay, do I have the data that actually uh, show this? And yeah, okay. uh, so that's uh, the challenge. So now that you have also had a lot of experience with um, those those kind of uh, clinical evaluation uh, with notified bodies, what do you see as currently the challenges that companies may have or may encounter uh, with clinical evaluation criteria, acceptance criteria, etc. So what are the things that are obvious for you that, yeah, there are still some problems with that? Yeah, so so I think now it's, it's uh, I mean, it's possible to build this CP, CR, PMC plan, PMCF plan and uh, evaluation report that sort of make, make sense altogether. Sometimes I think the struggle is the interlink is uh, between processes. So one of the things that one one of the acceptance criteria is also that you know the adverse events that you found in the studies in the data that you have are compatible with what you have in the uh, risk management with what with, with what you assumed in the risk management at the beginning or the data that you found there. And the problem is that often then the two processes don't speak to each other. So you you will like to do that. But uh, there is a risk management that it's uh, it's maybe very old and it's structured in a different way, and so there you get stuck in. I cannot do much, so that's I think it's it's a big point that will be addressed, I guess, also for notified bodies in the in the future. Because I mean, the point is, if I find that uh, uh, skin irritation uh, with this type of devices occurs in five percent of the patients and my risk assessment is uh, it provides a, a, a harm of uh, uh, skin irritation that is 0.1%, something is wrong. Because yeah. I mean, that means that I have underestimated this risk in risk management. I, guess. I mean, if, you, if, if in SOTA you find a certain level and in your risk management, there is a different level. It's also the kind of thing, how can I justify that? And exactly. how can I confirm that I have made the right research or right information to to prove that, uh, which, yeah, this misalignment can And be the problem is that of, often the, the risk managements, they don't speak in terms of the arms that actually you should look at based on the SOTA and uh, and not and not just that, but also when they do numerically things pass hardly together. So it's still very qualitative, let's say the the, the comparison when it, when it is done. And that, I think the same also is, P, is with PMS. So, uh, we are at very early stage with uh, PMS, so it's more. I think manufacturers are now collecting data and starting to understand what they have to collect and and so on. But there is there is a, the, the the final step of the analysis and the interlink with the other processes is still uh, not there. So that's where sometimes we struggle to make the connections uh, because it's uh, still not possible. Okay. And um, as we talked about SOTA, where we need SOTA for the acceptance criteria. Um, I suppose there are also some products where it's a bit difficult to make SOTA. So the, this can be then challenging. How can you do then the yeah. acceptance criteria when, when, when it's difficult? Yeah, so if, if you, the problem is if you don't find uh, the comparison value or what, so it, it can be challenging. I think, I mean, I expect that for most devices, really for the big majority, uh, things are relatively straightforward. There are some very innovative products for which this can be a, a, a challenge uh, because there is not enough background information and actually what the MDR says, which I understand it might not be so easy to swallow for some manufacturers, is that you have to create this, this uh, background information. So you have to go and find a way to uh, find out what uh, is actually uh, the values are that you need. Okay, and this could be a retrospective data collection, talk to health insurances and, and so on. So to find out some uh, um, values. The good thing in that case is that you have maybe more freedom on choosing the, the outcomes because it's not given by the field, but it's you defining it for the first time. So that could also have some advantages. But uh, I think in general, one finds this information. Okay, no, I think it's really great because, um, yeah, um, the what, what I like is this um, really step by step thinking of we go first for the SOTA, we understand what's happening on the field. With that, we can already collect the acceptance criteria that the field 
accept if I can say that are normal, and then we can use that directly for us. And if the notified body sees the sequence of where we are going and where what we are arriving and proving that yes, we are meeting those acceptance criteria, then it's you can say the the, the loop is, is is closed, and then um, there is no nothing that they can argue against you because mainly you have followed all this path and and where to do that. So I hope really that this uh, advice that you provide is really helping people to understand now how they can do that and they can make it uh, make it uh, make it happen. Yeah. Um, great. So really, thank you, uh, Cesare, for all that. Um, can we just maybe explain to the people that are listening to us, maybe how, why they should contact you maybe, or how, would they, how you can help them, uh, maybe on these kind of, uh, elements here. So we can help exactly creating this clarity, this, uh, background so that, that allow you to create a, a technical documentation that makes sense, not just for the reviewers, but also for, for, for yourself. I think this is very important. This is something that we really struggle uh, and want to uh, emphasize that i mean these processes should not just be there to get the certificate which is very nice but also as internal knowledge they can be used to improve the quality and the uh, uh, in innovation of your devices and that's what we really aim to do great so don't hesitate to contact cesare at for better devices i will put all the information on the show notes and uh, go there. Uh, if you want to come, also go to the podcast that we are uh, that uh, on the podcast webpage. I have made also a lot of episodes with Cesare about clinical evaluation, as we said. So you can also go and check those elements. If you want really to have a clear understanding of all the clinical evaluation elements, so check all the podcasts that we have done with Cesare because yeah, all those are really sequential. We are talking about mm, clinical evaluation for normal product, but also about software devices, about IVD, about things like that. So it's really something that uh, can really help. You uh, help you a lot, so thank you, Cesare, for all those uh, information. Thanks um, a lot. Great, so thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope there will be maybe another topic that we can talk with the, the public and educate them. And uh, yeah, I wish really that uh, this episode is really helping them to uh, to pass, if I can say, easily the uh, clinical evaluation review by the by the Okay, Cesare, it was really a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Bye bye.